بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض. We continue about the manners of learning and teaching. The first was to learn from those who are qualified. We mentioned, for example, the last point was Hadith Rasulullah is saying that Dhul Qarnain was giving this advice that don't learn from someone who doesn't benefit from his own knowledge because then it's not going to benefit you. Then there is a Hadith that I like to a little bit uh, ponder on. Amir al-Mumni salam says, Ayyuhan nas e'lamu, O people, be aware. And he mentions among the different things, al-ilm makhzunun inda ahlih. وَقَدْ أُمِرْتُمْ بِطَلَبِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ فَتُلُبُوهُ This is in Al-Kafi. Knowledge is reserved with its people. And you have been commanded to seek knowledge from its people. So seek it. So it means that, as we said, you have to seek knowledge first. Second, you have to find proper people. People who are ahlul ilm. People who are really dedicated to knowledge. Inshallah, we will explain more about this. But what I wanted especially to highlight in this hadith is Al-ilm makhzunun inda ahli. Ilm is reserved. It's treasured. It's like a treasure which is hidden. Sometimes people think just to be next to an alim makes you alim. Even if my father is alim, my mother is alim, my brother or my sister is alim or alim, it doesn't make me alim. If I meet an alim 10 times a day, it doesn't make me an alim. If I have lots of books around me, it doesn't make me alim. I go every day to Hosea and come, it doesn't make me alim. Knowledge is like a treasure, which is not on the surface. You have to go a little bit deeper. You have to dig to find it. In other words, it needs deliberate attempt to get it. Akhlaq is somehow different. If someone has husnul khul, even by meeting him you get something. It's like a fragrance. If someone has put perfume, and even if you are close to him, you get it. Or you just shake hand, you get it. But knowledge is not like that. Knowledge, you need to talk to that person, to listen to that person, to sit on the floor and, you know, take notes. Knowledge is not a spreading like fragrance. Yes, you can see the fragrance of knowledge in an alim, if he's a really alim. You can enjoy seeing him, but you don't become alim by looking at him only. In our hadith, for example, it says, Anadaru ila wajhil alim ibadah. Looking at the face of alim is ibadah. Anadaru ila babil alim ibadah. Looking at the door of alim is ibadah. Why? Why? Just to look at him and look at his door? Or means that after that you go one step further and try to learn. So, ilm is makhzun. Ilm is not something which is like, you know, Fragrance like rain spread all over the world. No. You have to go and look for it and search for it and get it. So 
even if you are son of an alami or ayatollah, doesn't make you necessarily alim. Yes, it helps you, but it doesn't make you alim unless you make efforts. Another thing about learning is you should be patient. Don't rush. And don't lose your hope. Say, so, you know, I, I've been studying a few months, I didn't learn it. It's not a matter of few months. It's a matter of from the cradle to the grave. Always be seeking knowledge. So hadith says, this is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ لَمْ يَصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ ظُلِّ تَعَلُّمِ سَاعَةً بَقِيَ فِي ظُلِّ الْجَهْلِ أَبَدًا If someone is not able to be patient for learning, for example, one hour, of a sa'ad means a portion of time, you have a particular issue. You have something about aqaid you don't understand, something about fiqh, something about akhlaq. You are not patient to learn. Okay, so the whole life you have to suffer from ignorance. So, patience with respect to particular issues, I spend one hour, for example, but patience with seeking knowledge for all other issues. It's not just one issue, this is about one issue. Also, you should not feel embarrassed or feel shy. I don't feel good, you know, to ask. For I am, for example, much older than these people who go to these lectures, you know. I am old, you know. They say, oh, you have not learned. I don't know how to read Quran, for example. I don't know how to say my prayer. I don't know my aqaid. But I feel shy and embarrassed. People say, you must know these things. No, don't feel embarrassed if you are learning. Don't, uh, you must feel embarrassed if you don't know and don't learn. So, La yastahi. This is Imam Raza alayhi salam. La yastahi ahaduhum idha lam ya'lam an yata'allam. None of them should feel embarrassed to learn if he doesn't know. So, there is no haya in learning. Another thing is, when it comes to knowledge, we have rights of manners about, you know, what students should observe towards the teachers, but Ayatollah Jawadi has been very brief here because the book is very already uh, large in size. He just mentions some of them. For example, you have to be very respectful to your teacher, to someone that you learn from him, to the extent that our hadith says you can even flatter your teacher. In Islam, it's not good to flatter. Yeah? Tamalluq is not good. Even in some hadith says, you know, Huthu turab ala wujuh al Those who are flattering, you know, put some soil <laughs> on their face. Meaning, meaning that don't encourage them and show that you are unhappy. But when it comes to teacher, not only it's not a problem, you can actually praise your teacher a lot. Of course, don't take it to <laughs> you know, extreme. Say something nicely, not a lie. لَيْسَ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ مِنْ أَخْلَاقِ الْمُؤْمِنِ الْمَلَقَ إِلَّا فِي طَلَبِ الْعِيمِ It's not among the traits of character of believer to flatter, except in learning, seeking knowledge. So this shows the significance of knowledge. Another thing is that in learning, we have to be very careful about our intention. Because Knowledge is something that people appreciate. Even those who don't have it appreciate. And ulama normally have a high position. So there is great chance that Satan may try to get into our way. And our nafsa ammare also, 
want to manipulate. So, from the beginning to the end, we have to be always concerned about sincerity of our intention. Why I am learning? Am I learning so that I would be put among scholars? Am I learning so that I tell people who don't know that I am better than you? Am I learning to argue with people? Am I learning so that when I enter to, in a place, they put me in the best position, they kiss my hand, they give me money? Or I am only learning for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sunni and Shia have mentioned this hadith in a almost the same. لا تطلب العلم لتباه به العلماء don't seek knowledge in order to boost and to, you know, show your, for example, you know, pride in front of ulama. وَلَا لِتُمَارُوا بِهِ And don't learn so that you argue with ignorant people. وَلَا لِتُرَاءُوا بِهِ فِي الْمَجَالِسِ Don't learn so that you show off in gatherings. وَلَا لِتَصْرِفُوا وُجُوهَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْكُمْ لِتَرَأُسِ Don't learn so that you attract faces of people towards you for position, for leadership. I know that if I want to be respected, I have to become an alim. To, for leadership. I am thinking of becoming a murderer. I am thinking of becoming a mom of our community. Please listen carefully to the punishment for such people. You know, in the same way that seeking knowledge and learning and teaching with sincerity has so much reward, but misusing knowledge has so much of punishment. فَمَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ كَانَ فِي النَّارُ If someone is learning for these intentions, he is using something which is for guidance to misguide people, something which is supposed to be giving light to darken his life and life of other people. وَكَانَ عِلْمُهُ حُجَّةً عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْغِيَامَةِ On the day of judgment, his knowledge would be used against him. As a proof against him. Hadith, you know, says, يُغْفَرُ لِلْجَاهِ لِسَبْعُونَ ذَنْبًا قَبْلَ أَنْ يُغْفَرُ لِلْعَالِمِ ذَنْبٌ وَحِيمٌ Seventy sins of people who are ignorant, or who are not alim, will be forgiven before one sin of alam is forgiven. And this is personal sins, but if it is misuse of knowledge, it's even worse. وَلَكِنْ تَعَلَّمُوهُ وَعَلَّمُوهُ But this will not make you decide, okay, I am worried. I don't go near knowledge because if I go near knowledge and my intention is not sincere, I am going to be destroyed. No, learn and teach, but work constantly on your intention. And something that remained in my mind for now it's maybe 30 years. One of ulama quoted from Ayatollah Qudusi, Rahmatullah. That he said, we should make sure that people who come to us to study in the Hosea as Talabe, they remain with the same intention that they entered. Of course, many times, inshallah, intention improves, 
But his worry was that sometimes as a teenager, as a young person, people come to Hose, they have nothing in mind except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times these days when people go to Hose, it means that they are really saying no to lots of other options that they have. There is more attraction in going to university or do other things. People, for the sake of Allah, decide to go to Hose. Sometimes from all over the world, they go to Qom, Najaf to study. There is no promise of dunya there. But the thing is that, is this going to remain? A little by little, when you rise and you receive attention, you get, you know, respect, position, money, then things can change. So Ayatollah Qudusi was saying, in a sense I'm interpreting, that I don't want to say that we can improve, but at least we should try to keep the sincerity of them so that it's not changing. May Allah, inshallah, have mercy on us and help us. Final issue for today is about Taking money for teaching, is it allowed or not? Can I charge my students or can I charge my audience if I take money from them? This is a very uh, detailed discussion. But if I want to summarize, I can say, if an alim looks at himself as someone who is delivering a service and then he has to charge, he is not alim. I'm not saying alim should not get money. But if he thinks that everyone has a job and they are paid, this is my job and people should pay me. Otherwise, there is no point. I don't teach people who don't pay me. Or I prefer to teach people who pay me more. You pay me, 30, for example, two, three thousand pounds, another community teaches they pay me five thousand pounds. I go there. You don't give me a house, those give me a house, I go there. If you look at the knowledge like this, you are not alim. You are a storage of knowledge. Not all. I read one hadith and leave this discussion open for tomorrow because we have lots of things to discuss here. Amir al Mu'min said in Ghoral al Hakam, and Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli mentions one part of the hadith, uh, but I mention all hadith because it has two other parts which are useful. لا يكون العالم عالما. Alim is not alim unless he has some quality. One is that حتى لا يحسدن لا يحسد من فوقه. It's very important. Look at position of alim. Alim is not alim if he envies people who are above him. Above him in position, in money, in leadership. Maybe even above him in knowledge. I have to know that Allah has given me great blessing and I shouldn't envy someone who is above me, but mo it's most likely means in the worldly sense. But even in the knowledge, you shouldn't negatively envy people. For example, oh, why this man knows more than me? I wish he didn't know more than me. <laughs> no, why you think like that? Wala yahtagiru manduna. And also does not humiliate people who are lower than him. In knowledge or other things. Alam is very balanced. 
he has fair understanding of his position. He doesn't, you know, become arrogant and proud. And he doesn't lose hope if someone is above him. Then the third part, it is what Ayatollah Jawadi has quoted. وَلَا يَأْخُذَ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِهِ means لَا يَكُونُ الْعَالَمُ عَالَمًا حَتَّى Then this is, repeat, coming after two things. لَا يَأْخُذَ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِهِ شَيْئًا مِنْ خُطَامِ الدُّنْيَا Alim is not alim unless he doesn't get for his knowledge something from dunya, from a good of dunya. So if I think the value of teaching one hour can be measured by anything worldly, say 100 pounds, 1 million pounds, I am not Allah. There is no object in dunya that can be put as a price for knowledge. What we are going to do in the practical life, inshallah, we will discuss tomorrow. But first, let's fix our mentality. My mentality should not be that this is my occupation. This is my way of earning money, making my life. I have also family and children. I, yes, we know that you have some practical needs. We will talk about it. But as far as your understanding is concerned and your intention is concerned, don't look at yourself as someone who has a job and has to be paid. You have taken job of the prophets and prophets didn't ask for payment. There is a beautiful hadith that Isa alayhi salam said to Hawariyun. This is not in this book. I took it from another book. Isa said to his Hawariyun, لا تأخذوا ممن تعلمون من العجر إلا مثل الذي أعطيتموني. Don't take from people for what you teach except what you have given me. <laughs> Means, did I give you, did I charge you anything? Did you give me anything? So why you are asking people to pay you? Did Rasulullah ask people to pay him? Did any prophet or Quran says in Surah Shu'ara, they kept saying, we don't want any payment from you. What people should do, what we should do for making sure that ulama are well looked after, that's another thing. But let's cl clarify our understanding. Inshallah, we continue this discussion tomorrow. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among true seekers of knowledge. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins and mistakes and shortcomings. Especially we ask him to forgive our lack of determination in learning and sharing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all people who are ill, to send rahmah and maghfirah to all people who have passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us and our children always on the right path. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our work easy and to enable us to overcome all obstacles and to spread peace and justice all over the world. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.